Yeah, a lot of Santa beer. So now, on to... All right. You ready? This is, yes. This is brand new for us. All right, so... Jay's idea. Um, I love it. I like that, too, man. We just, you know, we get so many comments and we thought, how do we make this fun? And yeah. how do we have fun? And, and so we're going to try something new where we're going into the mailbag. Right. Real simple. Here's all you have to do. Go pick a YouTube video. Leave a comment. Right. Bonus points if you leave a comment on this video or one of our mailbag videos. Because that could get interesting. It's kind of like that whole MC Escher thing where you're watching yourself in a mirror and a mirror and a mirror and a mirror. mirror. Right? (laughs) So, so yeah. So, we're just, we just thought we'll just, you know, Jay's picked out some of his favorites or interesting ones. And I have two. And we're going to, we're going to. We're gonna read through them. So, so yeah. So, uh, <laughs> so, um, do you you want to you want I've got one ready, or do you want to go? Yeah, first you, you go ahead and start, Keith. Go ahead. Yeah. I, All right. I, yeah, because I think yeah, we we picked a couple that are the same, but that's okay. Go ahead. We don't have so, much time today, but we'll 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 throw a few out there. Yeah. So, um, let's see. So, uh, and what video was this from? Is that the it first was one? Yeah. From I think the so the the first two that I've got are from now that you threw me a curveball here. The Ford Illuminator. Now 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 here's why this is interesting because we shot this Ford Illuminator video months before Ford released them at SEMA. I hate to say I told you so. And put it out there. We mm-hmm. told you guys it was going to be a big deal. Mm-hmm. And then two or three months later, sure enough, it was a big deal. So we got um, a lot of comments. And Tons. honestly, the video started blowing up months after we released it. Um, yeah, which is a, gratifying be, right? because we knew it was going to be at SEMA, and we not only did we talk about it before SEMA, but we covered it at SEMA as well. And lo and behold, who but our good friend Jay Leno introduces the 1978 Ford F100 that was fully right, electric right. resto mod, which right. turns out great. And that's kind of why why it kind of spurred some of these comments. And we love the comments, and we think they're great questions. Um, some of them are a little, a little over the top. Um, I'd like to throw a little disclaimer in there, guys. We are a media channel. We are not Ford uh, Motor Company uh, tech advisors on how you install these into your uh, gremlins, okay? Uh, uh, there, oh, yeah, right. There, there are people out there that can help you, Um but you have just as much information at your fingertips as we do on that. We might be able to refer you to companies that 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 are doing it, but even Ford does not have a full installation guide available yet to their customers. They are working on it. I have good authority on that. I know that they are working on it, but right now they are not yep. giving that information out. So you have to stay tuned to that. So there you go. Want so, to get that out there. All right. So so Joe Slothauer said Slothauer, sorry Joe. <laughs> this needs to be plug and play. Skateboard would be great. Now, what Joe's talking about, for those of you that don't know, is skateboard is Tesla's platform, I believe, for their uh, battery units. Am right? I, am I mistaken there? Nope, it, you're not it, mistaken. It's somebody's platform. Yeah. And Joe also pointed out that uh, all units GM are sold out. To it as that. Oh, GM is it refer- GM? GM? I think GM refers to it as that as well. Okay, so, so I think it's just kind of a skateboard. Yeah, thing. meaning basically your battery banks on a platform like a skateboard with wheels right and that's Mm -hmm. you know and so that yes i i see your point you want plug and play i don't think that's what ford was targeting here i think they were going after like they showed us at sema the resto mod crowd like you figure it out be creative we're putting it out there and joe you kind of make my case for me because your next your next sentence says all units are sold out well mission accomplished ford right like they just <laughs> threw it out there to see what would happen and they're right. gone yeah and and to kind of dig into a little bit deeper why we we don't think that you know a, a skateboard type platform 
what would be beneficial to the resto mod crowd. For example, SEMA electrified that area that we went to to see uh, all sorts of vehicles that were con- converted resto mods over into an all electric vehicle. Those battery packs um, could be in the back end, the front end. It just depends on what type of vehicle is where well, you can put those things. And what you if know? you don't care about range? Like, what if you're trying to drag race the thing and all that extra weight isn't right. useful? Like, you only need it to go 50 miles or 100 miles, right? I mean, exactly. It's for various applications. So, which is very similar to what Jeep has done with, with their 4xe, which is not an all yeah, electric vehicle. It's, it's, it's an plug-in. assist. Yeah, it's got right. like what 20 miles range something like that yeah it's a plug-in hybrid yeah uh but it's designed to assist on in the off-road environment so yeah pretty pretty neat technology i mean we could stay right in this theme all day long with electric stuff but um all right so joe thanks for your comment yeah yeah awesome yeah absolutely um i just kind of wanted to read this and it ties into what we just said this is from michael uh michael lowe uh also on the same subject matter Crate motor, thirty nine hundred bucks. Custom electronics to connect it, ten thousand. Batteries, thirty thousand. I'm so glad the average enthusiast now has the ability to build EV resto mods. That's a great. I mean, that's a great comment in two ways. Now, I don't know if he's being sarcastic oh, about so. that. I think so. But if you are, um, I can argue that point because I know a lot of people that do gasoline engines resto mods that are in it to ninety to one hundred thousand dollars easy. That's so I mean, your argument there—that's typical. That is. So your argument on the, the cost of it is is really not an argument. I mean, we can we can talk about that all day long. Just, you guys, just depends on how far you want to go. Time and time again, we have said on this program, we are not an EV channel. We are automotive enthusiasts, and it 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 is very enlightening to me the sheer number of people that are um, upset that your cheese got moved. And I I get it. Like we we like what we like. I'm not gonna be a huge fan of self driving vehicles when I lose the ability to drive mine, you know, right. and that right gets taken away from me. But I think the point Jay and I have repeatedly made is I don't think you're gonna have a say in it. The change is coming, it's already underway. Um we're just pointing out what's happening. It's up for you guys to decide, but this whole attitude of I'm gonna wish it away. I, right, you, you're 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 in for a rude awakening. You're, you're in for a rude awakening. And if I were you guys, I'd be concentrating on more of the portfolio that you could be building for yourself financially if you'd invest into some of these companies. Uh-huh. Because I'm telling you right now, if you don't believe that, go to sema dot org, and they just had a press release about they were overwhelmed with the amount of electrification as well as the overlanding stuff that's going out there. And the overlanding and the electrification is starting to work hand in hand. Hello. You'll see what we're talking about. So there you go. So back to the part that he mentioned about $30,000 for batteries. Okay, we don't have a full grasp yet on what a aftermarket or, you know, or even a, a factory battery pack is going to cost for your resto mod. Here's what we do know. Depending on the number of battery packs you want and what kind of range you want, just as Keith said in the previous comment, is going to determine the cost of that. So you could effectively get away with $10,000 worth of batteries, and that's really all you're going to need, especially if you're only getting it out on the weekend or something and driving around, or if it's a commuter for a short distance. There you go. So everything costs, guys. It's it's, so it's, it's part of it. I, I'm going to tag onto that one, and then I'll find one that isn't. On this mm. illumin- We've just gotten so many views on this Illuminator that I feel like I we, we owe the people. A- Which, yeah. By the way, go to uh, youtube.com forward slash parts kind of gurus and be one of the 30 to 40,000 people who have already watched it. There you um, go. So, so Fantasy Engineered said, yep, triple exclamation point. I just need 2,500 pounds of batteries. Why not sell us a solar powered laser blimp with a beer cooler? RIP. Good luck, all. Okay, uh, you know what? All I have to say to that is, I'm not even going to put an opinion in here. I'm gonna, I'm gonna uh, draw your attention to uh, the first comment that we read, which basically pointed to the fact that these engines were already, I'm sorry, these motors were already sold out. So Correct. So your anger at whatever amount of components or battery weight or whatever, uh, you lose, dude. You lose, bro. People bought them. I, <laughs> Sold I, out. I don't. I'm not buying. I haven't bought one. I'm just I, this whole argument of 
you know, it's nonsense. It's not. They're, they're selling them like crazy. Like, you may not like it, but other people do. And right. that's, again, we're just kind of pointing that out. They are going like hotcakes. Yes, so, they are. So, um, you know, I, you know, maybe a laser blimp is on the way. I don't know. But this is not as far-fetched as you, you people are trying to, some of you are trying to paint. Now, we, we Jay and I have said many times, to your point, on a rational level, this current generation of EVs is not where it's at. They do have to solve the the range issues. They do have to solve the lithium volatility issues. They do have to, you know, we think solid state's probably where they're headed next. But, I mean, it is where it is right now. And it's, you know, the automotive industry has never just stopped. They're going to continue right. that development. This is Gen 1. Better things are coming. But we're not going to go back to internal combustion engines if this one day just dries up and fails, that's right. not it's, gonna happen. It's move it's it's move forward. Um and again, you've heard Keith and I say this over and over again that some of these technologies are bridges to get to the next technology. And again, we you know, Keith and I have, have preached it that we we don't really think that the batteries as we know them now are the answer. And we don't think that that's going to be part of it. I think that we have to use what we have at the moment to get there. Um, so stay tuned uh, until 2030 and see where we're at, which, by the way, there's been some major announcements of major OEMs that have committed uh, now after several other OEMs said that they were going all electric. Uh, that has come to the forefront, and Nissan being one of those, um, they just committed to 23 uh, all-electric models by 2030, I think was what they said. Yeah. 23 models, Lo- man. Lots of problems to solve. Not arguing that point at all. Just trying nope. to paint the picture to you guys that it's only going to increase in popularity. So right. uh, I've got one more, if I may. You go ahead. Um, now, this is another video that we did that blew up uh, sort of unexpectedly on this one. This was the Knight Rider video that uh, oh, man. just so we sort of put out there for fun because I think Jay and I both kind of enjoyed that era. And, you know, we just I thought, what the heck. Right. So if, if you're not familiar with what we're talking about, uh, just go join the masses that have watched this video. Uh, but basically, the night my, the rights to the Knight Rider movie were purchased, and the director was the same guy that's done the Fast and Furious movies, and so there's some interest there. Um, so, let's see. Um, oh, man. We got so many hits on that. Back it's in, just crazy. Back in my level, commented, I feel like I may have to blow something else up, sorry, if the voice of Kit is a female. Fair point, but now you got me thinking, would you really? Like, if, let's say they got some famous, you know, like, you know, the the the, the Wonder Woman actress or, you know, some favorite right. celebrity. Linda Carter. Scar- Scarlett Johansson from Black Widow, right? Or, right. Or, yeah, or somebody was just that, you know, hey, voice. I right? wouldn't want it to be a, the Alexa voice, and we did a video on that one as well. She's she's an artist out I, there. I mean. That's a big deal, but, would it, you, you know, hey. Would you really... I, I almost feel like there could be some odd sexual tension going on with a female voice of. I'm not trying. I'm not really trying to stir things up. I'm just saying, have we? Have, Ooh, has he just touched on maybe a new plot to this this thing? It's Knight Rider and Knight Rider S. I, I mean, and I mean, do we have a female and male, and then they mate and have little I, I, cars? Well, I it gets this is kind of getting weird, but you know, I <laughs> I'm just. It, it, hey, I'm just reading the comments and pontificating a little bit. It yeah, it could happen, right? It could it could happen. I mean, uh, anything in in um, the world of movies, uh, cinema is reality. So there you go. Um, you you just you may you may not uh, like it, but uh, it may happen. So there you go. Wow, our first out of the mailbag mailbag in the can. Awesome. I, I, I like that segment. Yeah, yeah. It's, we'll do it again. You guys just leave. If you keep leaving comments, we'll we'll pick some and read them. So we will keep leaving the comments exactly, and um, make sure you go over to youtube.com forward slash parts kind of gurus and subscribe and hit the uh, notifications bell, and uh, so you are aware when this stuff comes out. So we got I got all kind of dinging going on here, man. What's going on? Um, Jay hasn't found the do not disturb setting on his Mac yet. No, I have it, and it says it right now. Oh, wait a minute. 